Ladies and gentlemen, imagine yourself in the Philippines in a maximum security prison that holds 1,600 inmates. Inmates convicted of murder, mayhem, and robbery. Inmates who dance the hustle. Your mind says it cannot be true, but your eyes see the truth. You have just entered the twilight zone. We'll see more dancing prisoners later, but here I am looking out my Manila hotel window and I see office buildings, exclusive condo complexes served by huge opulent shopping malls. By this view, you wouldn't know that there is a significant portion of the Philippines that lives in poverty. This is an example. Here is the face of poverty. This is literally feet away from a major government office building. These are structures in the middle of a roadway made of refuse and gathered materials. They're home to families. No sanitation facilities, no fresh water, no real safety. Crime born of poverty is a huge concern. And when I speak of prisoners, I ask all of us to never forget American prisoners of war. This is the Manila American Cemetery where there are 17,000 American military personnel at rest and memorials for another 36,000 Americans whose bodies were never recovered from World War II. Now, this is summer in Manila. The poor face an uncertain fate when typhoons hit, and the prisons that you'll see later afford very little shelter, although more shelter than for people living on the street. Shortly after we left Manila, a typhoon like this hit, and the prison waters were 10 feet deep. Now, I love this photo. It's my Christmas photo for my family. Um, <laughs> Actually, it's a SWAT team that accompanied our, our State Department group as we embarked on our first prison tour. Philippine jails are inherently unsafe, antiquated, and scary. The Philippine government did not want us taken hostage. Now, this is the Quezon City Jail, built in 1960s to house 800 arrestees that now holds 3,500 prisoners. Those having committed heinous crime and the innocent are housed together. Almost all are poor. The average time between arrest and arraignment is six years. Now most of the jail has no true cells. They're just rooms packed with squatting prisoners. No beds, no chairs, no privacy. Most of the jail is open air subject to wind, rain, and varied temperatures. Now we found the jail surprisingly tidy, and that is until we found out they had spent a week before cleaning it up for us. Now this is prison air conditioning, unfortunately. And at this point, I had actually di ditched our SWAT team. I like to do things like that. And I was wandering around the cells talking to prisoners. Then all of a sudden, I realized I could have been taken hostage. But after risking TB, tetanus, typhoid fever, and malaria by just being there, I said, screw it. This is the dentistry as practiced in the prison. I met the young dentist. She was a very lovely lady. She was proud of her job. She wanted me to see her office and she and a colleague while they were working. I said, of course, I'd like to see it. I want to see alternatives to Obamacare. And in prison, dentistry is pulling teeth. Now, most food is provided by family members outside the jail. No one looked malnourished. Nourished. Obesity was rare. Some prisoners gave us looks that could kill, but others were very, very polite and kind. One prisoner insisted on giving me his t-shirt. He was five foot two. Now, we were allowed a tourist day between university lectures and, in, and just never ending government meetings. This indeed is the river upon which the movie Apocalypse Now is filmed. While very beautiful, seeing it from water level in a World War II dugout canoe in a flood made me pray that I'd live to see another prison. Now, the gentleman in the middle is Cardinal Vidal. He's short in height, towering in stature, beloved by his country. As a child, he survived the Japanese occupation. As a spiritual leader, he helped his nation survive a brutal dictatorship. In his latter years, he's become a very strong proponent of judicial reform and prison reform. Now, 400 miles from Manila is Cebu, the Cebu Maximum Security Prison. Trying to bring peace, religious leaders and prison authorities crafted their perception of a meaningful role for 1,600 convicted serious offenders. That role was to become the world's largest prison troop, dance troop. And now I give you the dancing prisoners of Cebu. Can you imagine in your wildest dreams the inmates of Deer Lodge Prison dancing together, promoting peace through rhythm, and actually developing pride in their accomplishments? These guys are now world famous for doing this, 
They've got something positive in their lives, which is good because they're not getting out of jail soon. Now, we are the world. Michael Jackson is a god in the Philippines. And music of the 80s is alive and well in the Philippines. Um, one of the other things we found there is that uh, gay men are very open and very well accepted. Not that this picture would give you any idea, but this is the grand finale dance from the Academy Award winning movie Slumdog Millionaire. We watched from a second floor viewing balcony as 500 men danced their hearts out. The two movie lovers eventually achieved their happy ending, which in this case did not include a good hairstyle award. Now as you watch this, remember, these are convicted felons. These are not Lady Gaga's little monsters. Now I challenge Sheriff Gutkin immediately to institute a dance program modeled after this. I see it at the Ellen. Ted Turner presents the Dancing Prisoners of Cebu. Now, my colleagues were not as excited as I to walk amongst lifers. Bragging rights for walking in this prison yard usually come only after you are convicted for a serious crime. Note the guy walking behind me with a hand in his pocket. He was a hit man. I know he was out to get me. Now, notwithstanding the prisons and the poverty, this is what I remember of the Philippines. Filipino people are resilient, family-oriented, given to great challenges, and ever graceful. This extended family that I met spoke no English, but through signing, they offered me a choice piece of meat, piece of meat from their roast boar's head. It was intended as an honor, and I took it as such. However, knowing how it was cooked, I swallowed it very carefully. Thank you very much.